At first glimpse, the Vietnam War appeared to be an absurd disparity between a global superpower, rich in technological and military prowess, and a small third world nation with a limited ability to arm an insurgent force with modern small arms. However, initial appearances were deceiving as the Viet Cong fought their larger and better equipped opponents, using every tactic in the guerrilla playbook and inventing some new lethal strategies along the way. These strategies included the deadly use of booby and mine traps. In this video, we look at seven of these ingenious traps. Our number six was an incredibly painful way for someone to die if they had the misfortune of running into it. Many military historians are skeptical of the viability of the Viet Cong's booby trap and mine warfare strategies. However, the staggering statistics and shattered pride of the American armed forces tell a different tale. From the beginning of 1965 to the middle of 1970, mines and booby traps caused 11% of all fatalities and 17% of all injuries among US Army personnel in Vietnam. Up to 70% of the Marines' casualties in 1965 were caused by explosives and traps. The Viet Cong's ingenious use of mines and traps had a tremendous impact on American morale, created a significant distraction, and diminished the technological advantages of the US military. The Viet Cong devised a strategy to challenge America's resolve during this protracted conflict by using bamboo, snakes, and anything they could get their hands on. The jungles of Southeast Asia are inherently dangerous, and the Viet Cong used locally sourced materials in their traps to make their home territory even more lethal. Let's start with our number one, and possibly the smallest of the booby traps, the cartridge trap. This trap was extremely difficult to detect and earned the apt moniker Toe Poppers, as it would blow the victim's toes off. A round of ammunition would be placed on a piece of bamboo and lowered into a shallow hole in the ground. At the base of the bamboo was a board and a nail. The weight of a person stepping on the cartridge would drive the nail into the primer, turning the nail into a firing pin and causing the projectile to be fired upward through the foot of an unsuspecting victim. This allowed the Viet Cong to ambush the other troops while attending to the wounded soldier. Depending on the size of the cartridge, this device could also inflict fatal injuries. Our number two will send shivers down your spine if you suffer from aphidiophobia. Viet Cong guerrillas often carried bamboo pit vipers in their packs, intending to kill anyone who searched the bag. Additionally, they would tie the venomous snakes to bamboo and conceal them throughout their extensive tunnel networks. The serpent was released directly toward the unsuspecting victim when the bamboo was unleashed. Occasionally, snakes were attached by their tails to the branches of trees at face height in the hope that they would attack American troops traversing the dense jungle. The snakes were incorrectly and dramatically dubbed three-step snakes, since you could only take three steps before the venom killed you. Tunnel rats of the US Marines required special training to navigate and deactivate these devices holding venomous snakes. The hemotoxin of bamboo pit vipers is highly potent Typically, the bite feels excruciatingly painful, as if scorched with a heated iron. The encircling skin dies and turns black a few minutes after being bitten, highlighting the puncture wounds. Due to necrosis, the site rapidly swells, and the skin and muscles turn black. The extent of the necrotic area is proportional to the quantity of venom injected and the severity of the bite. At number three, we see how habits can kill you in war. A favorite type of Viet Cong booby trap was rigging flags. Early during the war, the Viet Cong realized that when American personnel secured a base or outpost, they would remove the flag flying there. Occasionally, this was done to substitute the flag with an American one so that allies would know the outpost was under their control. 
At other times, soldiers kept the flag as a souvenir. When the Viet Cong realized they could no longer keep a base, they hurriedly gathered everything they could and fled. Some personnel were entrusted with placing mines throughout the base before leaving. Before abandoning the base, the final task would be to plant the flag trap. A Viet Cong combatant would attach a nearly invisible cable to the flagpole's pulley system and conceal an explosive at the pole's base. When US forces entered the deserted post, someone would be responsible for lowering the enemy flag to signal that the base had been successfully taken. When the unfortunate soldier drew the drawstring to lower the flag, the explosive would be activated and detonated directly beneath their feet. You could easily be fooled into believing we are talking about an energy drink when you hear the name of our fourth booby trap. The grenade in a can was a common booby trap device that every US combatant needed to be wary of. This was a straightforward but lethal trap that could be deployed anywhere. Two empty metal cans were inserted into the ground or mounted in the trees along a path to create a grenade in a can. After removing the safety pins from both grenades, the live grenades would be inserted into the cans with the striker mechanisms secured. After securing each can and grenade, a trip wire was attached to the end of each grenade. When an enemy combatant stepped on the wire or tugged it with his boot, the grenades would be pulled from the cans and detonate instantaneously. Even if one grenade was pulled out, the explosion would likely cause the second one to detonate. Two grenades exploding along a path where multiple soldiers are walking would be devastating. The bamboo whip comes in at number five. The bamboo whip could be made anywhere in the Vietnamese jungle, using only natural materials. This trap was constructed by finding and chopping down a long, thin piece of bamboo. Smaller sections were sharpened and attached to the main body of bamboo. The bamboo whip with spikes would be fastened to a tree along a path or in an area with significant US military traffic. It would be drawn back into the jungle, creating tension that, when released, would cause the bamboo whip to lash forward at speeds of up to 100 miles per hour and strike anything in its path with tremendous force. The bamboo whip would be attached with a trip wire after being drawn back. When US soldiers walked down the path and someone tripped the whip, the long piece of bamboo would swing forward and the sharpened barbs would impale the unfortunate soldier in the front of the line. We've arrived at our number six, a two-pronged trap with two ways of killing you. Punji sticks were one of the most well-known ambush devices employed by the Viet Cong. Viet Cong soldiers would excavate a deep trench and position serrated bamboo punji sticks facing upwards. They would then weave branches and foliage together to create a false ground. If a combatant fell into the hole, the bamboo stakes would impale them. It was a genuinely horrifying but highly effective trap. Vietnam's dense forests made it possible to set this booby trap almost anywhere and conceal it easily. Some punji sticks were lined with regular bamboo that had been sharpened. Others had stakes covered in human or animal feces, making the trap a double-pronged killer. This would enhance the likelihood of infection if a combatant was impaled but survived. Adding a biological component such as feces to a wound almost guarantees the development of an infection. This would slow down entire squads as they returned to base carrying wounded soldiers, making them ambush targets. It appears that the Viet Cong employed punji sticks not only as booby traps, but also as a form of biological warfare. Last but not least is the terrifying mace. As US soldiers traversed jungle paths to reach their next objective, they were susceptible to ambushes from above. The mace was a large wooden or metal ball covered in barbs and secured to the branches of the jungle. The spines were constructed from bamboo, branches, and even metal. 
The mace would be attached to a tripwire and secured in a tree. When an unwary soldier caught his boot on the wire, it would unleash the sharpened ball, which would fall from the trees and impale the soldier's head. If this did not immediately result in the soldier's death, he would wish he were dead. The spines could not be removed without killing the wounded combatant, so the mace either caused death on impact or shortly thereafter. The Viet Cong thoroughly analyzed their American adversaries' strengths, weaknesses, and perhaps most importantly, their routines. The Viet Cong were combatants from the Third World who were intimately connected to their natural environment. There was no respite from the Vietnam War for the Viet Cong, only victory or death. One of the most critical aspects of the Vietnam War was the fight against communist explosives and traps. Despite this, it is seldom discussed. As the war in Southeast Asia disappears into the rearview mirror of history, we must credit Charlie for defeating a superpower with homemade traps.